Yo, what's up guys, it's Nash here coming at you with a brand new video and today we're talking about how to go out and make sure that your influencer posts are actually gonna work and actually gonna make you money. So it's one thing to go out there and you know post an influencer post and do your research by you know looking at likes, how many likes it gets, how many comments it gets, if they're legitimate, how many followers they have. It's another thing to make sure that you're almost sure without a shadow of a doubt that this influencer will at least make you your money back or at the very least make you some sales, right? So how do we actually go out there and do it? Because I know a lot of you start with 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 150 bucks, you don't have a lot of money to spend in ads. So you need to make sure that every dollar that you do spend in ads actually gets you a return on an investment. All right, so before we jump into this video, why don't you go ahead and hit the subscribe button and also hit the like button. Let me know that you like this stuff and also hit the notification bell that'll keep you up to date with everything that I do because I'm dropping new videos every single day. They're all free and let's jump in. All right guys, so the first thing that you need to realize um, when you're making an influencer post is that uh, there's there's four things that you really need to you know focus on and if you make sure that you follow these four, you can almost positively be sure that you're at least gonna make a sale. All right, so number one is that you need to make sure the product matches the audience, right? So what do I mean by this? Uh, let me see if I can go down or uh, just make it dumb. Okay, so what do I mean by the product and, and the audience match? Well, I talked about this a little bit ago in, in you know, a different video that you can watch as well, um, but basically, what I mean is that you shouldn't be promoting, you know, cat products on a dog page, which everybody's heard. That's cliche. You know that it's common sense, right? But yeah, what I see is so many people out there promoting like watches on a meme page or, you know, hats on a meme page or something else on a meme page that is just a general audience that is just brought together. doesn't really have any sort of, you know, common traits other than that, that they like funny comments or funny, you know, little gifts or pictures or whatever. So. To me, if you're promoting a watch on a, on a meme page, that tells me that you've done no market research. Why? Because if you did, then you'd realize that most meme pages are consisted of high schoolers and younger, which means most of those kids don't have money, which means they're gonna have to ask their parents for the money, which is another step, which their parents are most likely not gonna buy it for them. Um, you know, so that just, just makes it very tough for you to actually make a sale doing that. Now, Another example that's a little more specific that you might find some value in is, say you have a blender bottle, you're promoting a blender bottle, you wanna to promote to fitness pages, which is great, right? People that are into fitness buy blender bottles. But say you promote on a, on a general fitness page, or even better, you promote on say like a yoga page, right? Yeah, people that are into yoga might buy a blender bottle, but when you really break it down, people that are into yoga are not necessarily into taking protein. They're more into, you know, natural healing, into, you know, the right foods, maybe veganism, um, diet, stuff like that, um, you know, vitamins. They're not necessarily into drinking protein, which is what you would use the shaker bottle for. So who would be into that? Well, it would be bodybuilders and people that go to the gym. So instead of promoting on a yoga page, what if you promote on people on, you know, bodybuilding pages or gym pages or something like that? you're probably gonna have a better chance of making sales because we're making sure that our product and our influencer are matching. Because you could have the greatest product in the world, the greatest niche in the world, the greatest ad in the world, all that stuff is the greatest ever, and you might have the greatest influencer ever, but if they don't match, you're not gonna make any sales. So you really gotta make sure those match, all right? The second thing is that you need to make sure that your website, um, funnel, and ad is professional, uh, how do you spell professional? Like that, okay, and easy, right? So what do I mean by this? Well, first of all, your website is self-explanatory, your Shopify website, your funnel, if you don't know what a funnel is, basically it's the process that your lead, the person that comes off of Instagram, goes through in order to actually make a sale or to make a purchase. So the let's, let's just talk about the website first is that obviously it has to be professional. It has to not look like a scam. It can't be stuff all over the place. It has to be easy to use and easy to navigate. Now the funnel is where that kind of comes in because what you're doing, whether you believe it or not, or whether you know it or not, is on Instagram when you're doing influencer marketing, you're doing what's called interruption marketing. Basically what that means is people are, you know, naturally surfing on Instagram, you know, liking pictures, commenting, doing whatever they do, you know, and it's, you know, Monday night or whatever. And here you go, you got this ad. You got to entice them enough, which goes into you know your ad being professional. You have to entice them enough, and you know give them a good enough deal, or you know give them something that's a once in a lifetime opportunity, 
you have to entice them enough to get them off of Instagram, which they don't want to do naturally, and get them onto your website, but not only onto your website, but to actually pull out their credit card and pay for a product that you're selling. You see how that's kind of difficult to do? So you really need to make sure that your website's on point and that your ads are professional, that you have a strong call to action, that you have scarcity in there, and then ultimately that your funnel is easy to use and cohesive. What I see a lot of people doing is actually just linking to their main website page. So if it's like ilovecats.com, they'll say like, get yours at ilovecats.com, but somebody goes to ilovecats.com and there's like 50 other products that have to do with cats and they can't find the one that they're looking for, so they're like, screw this, I'm leaving, right? So what if instead of that, because you're losing a lot of customers doing that, what if instead you link them either directly to the product or number two, which is what I do a lot, is I make a uh, featured on Instagram page, which is basically the product that they are going for, plus a bunch of other products, maybe you know five to 10 other products that are similar, um, so that almost acts as like an upsell page without actually being salesy. So they can see the product, they know how to get there, it's easy and they know what to do, but yet they see that you have other stuff available that they might be interested in, right? All right, so number three is to um, study the page for a few days. And I know it seems kind of obnoxious that you have to study it for a few days, but the reason is, is because you wanna start seeing trends. You wanna start seeing if people are promoting a, the same product multiple times, which means something, means that that product is probably good if they're making money, right? Or you wanna see if they're testing certain products, if certain products show up a lot, if certain genres of products show up a lot. And if you see a lot of advertisements on a page from the same person, that generally means that they're making some money because they're going back to that page because it's obviously you know making them some money. So if you study the page, you'll start to get a general idea of how well it's doing. And that kind of leads me into number four, which is to, and this isn't an original idea, I actually have to give uh, the credit to Hayden Bowles, which is another YouTuber. If you haven't checked him out, you definitely should because uh, you know he has, he's got some great content. Um, but it's to um, actually reach out um, to people who have advertised, right? So a lot of times you're studying these pages, you see, yo, uh, you know, this page, I Love Cats and Dogs is advertising like every other day, every third day. And, you know, they're running these ads and it's for the same thing or, you know, and it looks like they're killing it, they're getting good engagement. But let me just reach out to them and see, you know, and just ask, be like, yo, how'd the shout out do? You know, did you do well? And most of the time, from my personal experience, I realize, and people have asked me this as well, and you know, I'm honest with them, is that people will be honest with you, and they'll be like, "Yo, you know, it was great. I made back, you know, two x ROI, five x ROI, whatever it is." Or they'll be like, "Nah, dude, it sucked. Like this guy, you know, kind of scammed me. I got like four visitors. I got like, you know, no sales. All this different stuff." So what that does is it tells you, well, you got to be selective because you also got to realize what the product is, how they're marketing it, how their website is, which you can actually see in their bio. You can actually do some, you know, market research and cut their uh, competitor research through that. Um, but you can also, you know, based on what they say, you can be like, all right, this guy is probably worth my twenty dollars. I'll, you know, put in the risk. Or you can say, eh, I don't know. I might step back. I don't think I'm going to run with him. Right. So it's really just a matter of studying and figuring out what's going on, um, you know through the page because ideally you you don't want to waste money especially when you're starting out or ever really but um especially when you're st starting out all right guys so hopefully this is helpful for you hopefully you have a influencer in mind that you can actually apply these to and you can actually run them through these four steps and be like yo is this guy good should i run with him or yo this guy sucks i probably don't want to run with him and hopefully it saves you you know 10 20 30 bucks whatever it is so if you like this video, if you got you know some value out of it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button as well if you liked it. it. Helps me out a lot, lets me know that you like the content and that you want me to continue making more videos like this. Also hit the notification bell, because like I said, we're dropping new videos every single day and we're trying to get everybody as a part of this family, everybody who subscribes to this channel and watches it, trying to get everybody to $100 a day, which is totally doable and we can do it. And uh, you know, I believe in you guys. If you guys just keep watching what I'm putting down and apply it, you guys are bound to make some money. Lastly, let me know if you have any questions. If you have any questions, obviously you can comment below, let me know. Or you can DM me on Instagram, which is at Nash Hagen. I'll leave a link in the description below that you can check it out. Leave me a DM, I'm always replying, um, and it's faster than like sending an email or whatever. So go ahead and do that, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. I need you in the morning.